one of our greatest sources of unhappiness and indeed one of our largest limitations in life is our own thoughts. Now that may sound a little bit incredulous to some, however the reality is it's often the way that we interpret things, it's often the way that we think about things that is the biggest limiting factor in life and it isn't always our fault. I mean the way we interpret the world, the way in which we engage with other people, the way in which we view things is very much a product of our past. It's so true what they say. We don't see the world the way the world is. We see the world the way we are. We're so heavily influenced by our past experiences, particularly the more negative ones. And again, this is um, not necessarily our fault. It's not that we're choosing to see things negatively. It's very much a survival um, element in us. You know, when, when bad things happen, we're meant to remember them. We're meant to focus on them in order for us to to look out for them and prevent them happening again. However, what that means is that we go through life assuming that everything is going to be bad. Likewise, if we were extremely distressed or neglected or abused in our formative years, we build these defense mechanisms. It's like as if we always stay in fight or flight. We see danger everywhere or else we learn to freeze in situations and we become completely paralyzed and unable to act and it is so limiting and it can be just chaotic for people it just means that they're always holding themselves back in life and they can't understand why things aren't working out for them and it can be such a source of frustration distress happiness depression anxiety However, the first way, first power step that you need to take to get beyond that is to first of all create an awareness of the way in which your mind works uh, and the way in which overthinking can be detrimental to your overall well-being and life satisfaction. It's about recognizing that our brains also have all of these biases. So you have all of those past experiences which are influencing how you interpret things, but as well as that you have all of these cognitive biases which again have a, a positive role in life. They, they basically reduce your cognitive load. It means that decision making um, is reduced. However, they can work against you. And some of those biases include, um, I suppose, a negativity bias. We, we tend to assume that there's bad things around the corner. We have different types of cognition, such as all or nothing thinking, very black or white thinking. Um, we assume we're 100% successful or else we're deemed a failure. We assume that a person is either good or they're bad instead of seeing the grey area, instead of seeing all of the colours in between. And it can result in us feeling very stuck in life. It can result in us not doing the things that it is that we want to do, you know. And when we look at life, we have to be able to start small. It's okay to dream big, but you have to realise that starting small is important when it comes to implementing change in your life and this can be really frustrating for people because of those biases they just feel well if I can't be good at something straight away or if I can't complete something to perfection there's no point in me doing it at all you know if I can't do a full hour in the gym there's no point in me doing 15 minutes and this sort of mindset is really really limiting and it's a narrative that we really have to get a hold of because it can keep us feeling very stuck Likewise, in our relationships, oftentimes we think ourselves out of loving our partners. And I know that thing that sounds bizarre, but instead of allowing our hearts to lead us and to see the person that we fell in love with, we think about all of their failures, all of their weaknesses. We make an assumption that, you know, uh, they're no good for us. And then we convince ourselves of the very same. And we give ourselves these narratives day in, day out, and eventually, we lose touch with our heart. We lose touch with the side of us that originally saw the person for all of their great qualities and we start just seeing them in a very negative light. And as I said, we can lose some of our greatest relationships in life because we just 
overthink them. Now that being said, it's not that easy to switch it off, you know, and oftentimes we have to act our way into thinking differently as opposed to thinking our way into acting differently. And this is a difficult one because we assume that the mind is the wisest part of us. You know, we assume that the, the head has all the answers, but in fact, the head creates all the problems and we have to start bringing it down into our heart. We have to start, you know, acting when we don't feel like acting. We have to start showing love when sometimes our mind tells us not to show love, showing compassion when sometimes our mind tells us not to. And the more we can come into the heart, the more we can recognize um, life in a more compassionate, benevolent manner, as opposed to seeing all of the bad things, and um, the more likely we are to live a fulfilling and peaceful and content life, as opposed to always being in conflict up in our minds. Now, the thing is, the thoughts are always going to be there. You have to accept them. However, you do not have to listen to them. You do not have to pay heed to them. And I suppose that's where the meditation practice comes into play, you know, that you can observe the thoughts but you don't always have to allow them to influence the way it is that you act and understanding that the way in which you interpret things oftentimes is very much influenced by past pain is one of the keys to move, moving forward the next is recognizing your emotions getting in touch with your heart and again that's not something that comes automatically to people you know we seem to think that oh we have this intuition and we have our gut and but we don't know how to tap into it because we've trained ourselves not to. I mean, if you think about it, we look to our phone for the answers before we look to our heart, um, you know, and that's what Google is for. But unfortunately, it just means that we have uh, lost sight of our inner wisdom and that's to our detriment. You know, we have to recognize that we have all of the answers if we're just able to pause, if we're just able to, to find that that lightness inside of us rather than all the heaviness of our thoughts and it's about giving yourself the chance to do that as well we're all about instant gratification we're all about having the, the answer immediately and I think this is what prevents so many people from finding a purposeful way of life is they assume that they have to know their purpose and they have to get it perfectly right and this keep stops them in their tracks it keeps them from doing anything because unless it's perfection it's no good and unless I know exactly what it is the final destination is there's no point setting out on the journey and I mean that's just so self-defeating you have to be able to accept the fact that you don't have all the answers that there's a lot of uncertainty in life there's a lot of things that you won't be sure of and take the chance take the risk and follow your heart and I suppose life is always going to be tough you know and was it St. Augustine that said that, you know, you don't pray for a lighter load, you pray for stronger shoulders. And it's so true. I mean, we, we have to accept that life isn't always going to work out the way that we anticipated, but that we have to roll with that, that we have to make the most of that. And again, it's training the mind to listen to the emotions, get in touch with the emotions, be comfortable with the internal experience, listen to what it is that's going on inside of you. And also, also recognize that things aren't always going to be perfect to be able to catch your thoughts to be able to be more accepting of your reality and of other people's uh, fallibility and your fallibility as opposed to always having these crazy high standards because ultimately those standards are what keep people unhappy they keep people stuck they keep people rigid they break up relationships they mean that people never take the chance that they they needed to take in order to find fulfillment and purpose in life so it's about sometimes doing things without overthinking them and realizing that what sounds like a voice of reason is often a, a voice that is just holding you back from all of the potential joy in your life if this is something that you are interested in learning more about get in touch with me on my website it's fundamentals.ie